to buy a pair of thems for for like i'm like okay i'm not gonna buy a pair of thems until like they drop something like kind of wild or like something different and like i saw the new brain dead ones and i'm like yep these are them these are them um mike says i think rossi's bread and butters european market risk speed but i think 95 percent of the u.s sales are aggressive yes okay everyone ask and you shall receive let's go my man can you hear me okay yeah can you hear me is this thing sure can. all right my first time actually using Streamyard or in the opposite end of Streamyard. so interesting oh, wow. what's up traveling traveling dude oh uh, yeah i'm finally You're finally all back over the texas. place so you went from texas to indiana to florida to georgia and then to maine and then, yep. and then, to Maine. <laughs> and then that's to a lot Maine of big the... that's a lot of big jumps yeah man it's good it's good to be back home but it was great to meet you in person at random yeah, nice to meet you too yeah uh it's i i was um i tell a few people the story but like i uh because you posted that reel of me just skating the the rail there and maybe i can bring it up or something but um i couldn't believe i still am like dumbfounded of how it what, it got like forty five thousand views in like an hour or two or something ridiculous. Yeah, something. yeah, it was, it was uh, pretty ridiculous. I don't know. See, that's the thing is like that illustrates clearly how I just don't understand Instagram. I I, I don't understand it still too. It's, sometimes shit works. Sometimes oh wait, can I cuss on this? Yeah, send it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes shit works, um, and then sometimes like yeah, things that you think would do well just don't, and like a lot of times things that like. I'll be like, oh, I'm just going to delete this, but I end up posting it anyways. That's stuff that does really well. I don't understand how yeah, you how know, algorithms like... and audiences work, but exactly. I feel like, um, you know, of course, there's there's some of that with with every social media platform, including YouTube. Um, but man, I feel like sometimes Instagram. So anyway, um, man, I you know this is sort of random. For one, thank you for jumping on on short notice because I I know I've been bugging you. <laughs> a couple of times so thank you for jumping on um did you um did you skate today nope nope i've been busy actually busy with work lately like it's probably the worst time i didn't really even get much sleep last night because i was trying to finish up a project but uh yeah not skating wait i did skate yesterday i take it back it's been such a long day yeah i did uh i did something for brandon uh brandon challenge awesome yeah Oh, I need to see. I don't. I haven't even seen the rules on that. Oh, you said uh, it's, challenge. Yeah, it's a reverse challenge. So you have to do the same trick forward and as if you were to rewind it. Okay. So say you do like a three sixty top soul or a three sixty soul, you'd have to do like an alley of soul two seventy out. Mm, so the same movements, just the opposite way. Ah, so literally, like identical to what it would be in if you hit rewind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Interesting. I'll have to I'll have to check that one out. It's a good challenge. Challenges are fun. I love just you know having a goal in mind and, and trying to do it, and seeing yeah. what you can do with within the limitations. So so I recommend trying yeah. things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and to like the your, chat, like your like your farmer challenge, which was oh which my, was amazing. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a that was a rough day. Like I tried to put a brave face on, but that was a that was a pretty rough day. <laughs> um and it was hot and whatever and the, not... that was the first time you skated those right those that's the first time i ever put sways on my feet well first time i skated sways first time I, yeah, I was skating flat which i don't normally skate flat i was skating mega frames which i've never skated mega frames um so fortunately i was just skating handrails which is about the only thing that i'm half half decent at um, oh, you're skating mega frames that's not farmer like i know well, <laughs> i know right take it down I'm I'm flagging this video. Uh, yeah, Sam had I just borrowed his sways and uh, yeah, he had had him set up flat. I think on like I don't know 60s or something on mega frames. But um, but anyway, I thought they were great skates. Have you skated sways? I have not. Yeah, I've seen them, but I've not skated. They look solid. The yeah, back flappies are, I guess, concerning. But I don't know if they fix that or not. What? One of my buddies, back. the back, the cuff would come up the back flaps. Oh, um, maybe that's just the way he skated them. Yeah, but uh, a little bit maybe a little bit too much forward flex. I 
I got you. Yeah, that's what I've. Um, who was it? Travis was asking in the. Oh yeah, Corey English. Where can I order? Where can I pre-order trees knees? Yeah, supply supply chain, all that. Yeah, you know, there's supply, you know, constraints and everything. So, um, everyone in the chat, if you have any questions, if you're okay with this tree, if you have any questions for tree, be sure to put them in the chat, and I'll try to get to them. If that's okay with you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. Um, talk to me about your experience at Ramping Camp. How'd you like it? Uh, Ramping Camp's always fun to chill. I don't really feel like I skate well there. Uh, the ramp is big. I warned you, it's a, it's a big ramp. Um, and uh, yeah, I just haven't been doing those bigger ramps. Uh, but the Ramping Camp experience is so much fun. It's so fun just to camp out. Just as soon as I get there, you should crack a beer open. I'm not really a drinker, but it's nice yeah. to, you know, it's uh, it's the atmosphere. It's, totally. it's so good to just uh, chill out. And, and luckily, it's it's like what, two and a half hours away from me. So I could pretty much go there whenever I want. But when you have an event there, it's a it's different kind of a uh, different kind of beast. Yeah. It's fun to chill. Although, yeah, going to events, like, it's so hard to get a run in, though, on the ramp there. And it's so, like, it's so, like, uh, anxiety driving. It's like, oh, do I go now? Do I go now? Oh, man. Like, as soon as I start to go, someone else will drop in. Like, ah, shit. Well, I always, like, my work, my greatest fear is, like, being the snake, you know? Right. And so, like, but it, 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 if that's your fear the whole time, you're literally never going to get a run in on the mini ramp. So. Yeah. I think that's, it's nice that they kind of, they're, they did the runs this year or mm -hmm. you know not, oh. not the runs but more so the the line um which is nice because like i don't want everyone to be the snake either but at the same time it's like i want to skate too but then this dude's going three times so like i know come on yeah whenever <laughs> I, whenever I, I i judge it like once so I, I didn't uh uh what's the word sportsmanship points as well right, like, right. If, you, if you hog in the ramp that's that's taking away a point exactly there should be uh there should be a penalty for <laughs> for snaking or hogging the ramp for sure i thought it was i mean you couldn't get a much more scenic i mean you know well, i don't I'm know if you've been you can but i mean it's such, it's such a beautiful thing it's so it's so nice just like being able to wake up and like, oh there's a ramp there i'll go right. see what's going on or oh these people are hanging out let's go talk with them see what's going yeah, on yeah it's fantastic and it was so cool that you were kind of just making the rounds and talking to people and came over to our little Tacoma tent that we had going on. But yeah, it's so scenic, so beautiful. The vibe, like you said, it's like you're kind of, and I, I can't remember if it was you who I was, ta I was talking with uh, Shreddy. Um, he was saying it's sort of a black hole in a way. I know you were live streaming, um, but I was having some issues with um, with some of my live streams, which was unfortunate. But oh, you told me I had a, I had a hotspot. Oh, did you? Yeah, that's all good. Next time. I've been considering getting one of those, so next time. But um, yeah, the vibe there is fantastic. So everyone watching, if you're considering going to Ramping Camp um, next year, absolutely do it because it's it's a wonderful experience. That's well, for it sure. It is an experience. Yeah. I guess the compound is of similar nature, which I want to go, but uh, I've just not been able to make it out yet. Traveling yeah. is traveling's tough. I am jealous of all your expeditions. Yeah. Well, I'll live vicariously through your tricks and you can live vicariously through some of my traveling. Um, Good deal. There we go. Um, yeah, kind of random question. Where do you draw inspiration from for tricks, for different ideas in skating? Um, anywhere I can get it, really. Mm -hmm. um, just looking around or sometimes it's just something will just hit me. And luckily I have my, my basement now. So if I have something, I can go in and just try it because it used to be you know, it used to be a pain, like, oh, I want to do something, but then, you know, you got to wait for the weather to be right or, you know, go to an indoor park. Um, but yeah, I've just been trying to act upon those ideas more, more often than, uh, than just thinking about them. Because sometimes they're just bad ideas too, so it's good just to get that <laughs> stuff out of the way, um, see if it works or not. Um, but yeah, just right. trying it seems to be the thing lately. I've always had ideas, it's just... Um, you know, actually putting executing them is, is a totally different beast right um it's so funny because i asked you that and tom v i'm sorry i totally didn't even realize that you asked this i asked that on my own accord but he literally asked the same question almost at the same exact time so tom v shut up um we talked about this a little bit of ramping camp so i'm actually sporting the epic grind shoes nice 
the epic grind shoes uh t-shirt here but my question and we talked about this and i just want our our listener our viewers to to hear um you know i've had a handful of people ask me hey ben should i buy epic grind shoes to learn to get better uh at grinding on rollerblades and i'd like to hear your thoughts okay um it shouldn't be too different from what I said, although I can't remember what I said terribly. So, uh, but um, the short of it is, is, is a yes, because I mean, any any time you can do, you can get some practice or you know whatever time doing a sliding motion, um, it'll translate over. It's like people who skateboard who start rollerblading, they learn, or they they learn, you know, like a proportionally faster than most people just because they're used to rolling and they're used to grinding and they're used to those, those some motions so um it's it's a good idea i would say yeah if you're trying to learn how to grind i learned how to grind rails because of them and i might be part of why i step on the things but not really but mm -hmm. it does it did, did make me more comfortable like being on a rail yeah um the shoes and like wearing them just being out like i'd rather hit a rail most rails on the shoes rather than on the skates so yeah, it can definitely. Uh, there's definitely a lot of crossover that can happen. Or it's not. They're not the exact same, but some things I feel like if you could do them in grind, you can definitely do them in skates, it's like uh, like unities and torques. Oh, that's a fact. Uh, backslides, sort of. But yeah, there's a lot of things that carry over. Okay, yeah, I I would largely agree. Um, it's funny because I just saw Montre's clip today of I think it's Berkeley in California. That curve rail. Yeah, the curve rail. Yeah, I always think big. of Jeff. I always think of Jeff Stockwell with this rail. Um, I think that's a BJ Bernhardt rail too. Oh, is that? I want to say. I know maybe she, Pat Lennon. Oh yeah, know. there's a few people. I know. I think in Killer Boots, a few people skate. <laughs> uh, I wish dude. I could just bust a was a double cartwheel to backflip. Yeah, exactly. I actually wanted to go here when I was on my little San Diego road trip. This was on my list, but because I hurt my my wrist, it uh didn't pan out. But that's okay. Next time. Do you, was so, so like with this trip you just did? Do you skate like most of the day and then go to the next place and skate some more the next day, or do you need like some downtime? I think I just send it um, for the most part. Like um, we just play it by ear so like for instance like we went to tallahassee and it's really just like i'm in i'm honestly kind of in like sacrificial body mode where i'm like yeah like i'll i'll figure it out when i get home i'll like mend my wounds and everything mm -hmm. and i'll rest up but um during the tour um or during that sort of traveling you know purpose purposeful traveling like that it's like hey like Let's get it in and the, uh, you know, the downtime and the injuries and everything like that is a little bit of an afterthought, which is not necessarily a very responsible mindset. Right. But, but, but you're in the moment and rough questions can, can deal later. Yeah. That's cool. Does that, is that um, like military training come into play with that? I think a little bit. I think a little bit. I, I, you know, I think I'd be lying if I said no, um, where you just kind of um, ignore pain, ignore discomfort and get the job done. Yeah, uh, I think I think that's probably a good observation. Yeah, well, it sounds very familiar to what you just spoke of. So yeah, it makes sense. So, um, oh, cool. My brother is is in the chat. I was just thinking about him. Um, my brother up in Maine. I don't know if you saw Your our brother, dude. He was God. That, that's really cool to have a have a brother that's to skate with. I'm sure, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I don't get to see him as often as I'd like, but um. You know, it's so cool how hyped he is. He started his own channel, uh, the slowest hair here. And, um, you know, he took, I mean, a true, I think it was a full 10 or 10 or 11 year hiatus where, I mean, I don't think he skated hardly at, at like literally at all. Like I took like 10 years off, but I skated like once or twice a year or something. He mm -hmm. took 10 years off and didn't, did not skate. And he still is, is wildly talented. So no, it was super fun to see him up in Maine and, and uh, goof around and skate a little bit. So. That's cool. And you guys grew up in Texas? We actually grew up in northern Florida. Okay. Uh, and that then... makes sense because I didn't... I tried to keep an eye on the Texas scene because I'm 
I'm originally from there, and my my parents live there. Where at? In uh, Fort Worth. Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I never seen you or anything like that back mm -hmm. in the day. When did you When did you start skating? I mean, honestly, probably probably seriously around oh one oh two. Oh, okay. Yeah, that so I'm a right. I'm a newbie. When did you start? Like early nineties, like ninety three. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like I'm a I'm a youngin in the whole scene for sure. Like I I have these you know the I did the uh, the Swindler video the other day and I'm like what are these things again like what is this? Oh um, man, I remember those. Yeah. Well, yeah, I skated those. Yeah, those are those are good skates. You look good in them. Yeah, and the, I love the Royale and especially how like the cuff is is angled for for doing Royales and topsoles. I'm, I'm gonna grab them real quick. Hold on. My stream now. Oh no, he's back already. So I was super impressed, honestly, because I was expecting to come away from that video with some very serious injuries. Um, but I mean, these things were great. Honestly, oh, yeah. there's a lot of tech that's even not even seen today, like with the with the huge rockering options on there. And the star hardware. Star molds. <laughs> star molds weren't necessarily the best idea because <laughs> they would get they would get stripped. Um, the sun, oh. the soul, the soul fins, those would wear down quick. I remember too the front yeah. ones. Back one surprisingly rugged, from what I remember. Oh yeah, the uh, the channel the channel grooves too. Oh yeah, <laughs> a lot of a lot of good a lot of good good ideas on there. That you don't really see much anymore, honestly. Ooh. I, I, I kind of want to get another pair again, but. Um, I don't know. Prices seem kind of high on them. I don't know. If, I don't know if this nostalgia is gonna really hold up. Oh, I tell you like, what, the I, liners. I, how how do you like the liners in them? Oh. <laughs> All right, I gotta put these on. Um, you know, so it's funny because I was literally gonna try to squeeze in a uh, a video today of just about my thoughts on skating this one layers here. Oh. Um. And so we have 15 people viewing or watching right now. Uh, and this is going to be really embarrassing for me to ask, but <sighs> Dirks versus Swindlers. Are they the same thing? Are they different? Can you enlighten me? They are highly similar. Similar. The Dirks didn't have star bolts. Um, yours don't have the, the, I guess the later models came with like a, a back plastic piece on the fin that was replaceable. Okay. Um, but no, those seem the, the ones you have seem the same. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make that, sure. I think the wheels and the color and maybe the liners might be different. Um, okay. But from memory, that's that's really all that was different. Got it. Okay. I didn't know if I was just way off or what. But so the liners, I was. And so anyway, I was going to say I was going to make a reaction video. I ran out of time today. But the um, the liners, I was actually super. I mean, it's it's going to be really hard to tell. But the, I was really impressed at not only the comfort now, but the uh, the way they've held up. Just even though these haven't clearly been skated very much over the mm -hmm. years, um, just from age itself, the liners have held up exceptionally. Yeah, well. those look good. Okay, those are all cloth. Yes. Okay, I believe the Dirks had leather. Okay. Or no, there's, this, was there's it, some kind was of it, weird. There was one that had leather and it didn't hold up well. I remember that. But uh, okay. That's looking pretty fresh still. Oh yeah, the, I mean, I'm wildly impressed at how these have held up over the years. Um, even if they just sat in someone's garage, it's it's super impressive. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, great skates, and everyone kind of comments and they're like, "Hey, yeah, I remember those being really, really hard to do anything in," and I'm like. I didn't yeah, actually like think... the Royales are pretty amazing stock too because yes. they have that bend and they have that bend in it combined with the uh, the angled cuffs. They were really right. good. Maybe not so much oh, yeah, <laughs> like, like the asymmetrical cuffs that you're saying. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. Yeah, so like the inside is lower, so you can you can bend in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Balance yeah, I miss, beams. I miss a lot of things from old skates that you don't really get anymore. Because I like to still skate them. Like I I got hurt pretty much right when you were starting. Mm -hmm. so that's like right in the dawn of the us ufs and like the fast back backslide plates and all that stuff so yeah i kind of have a fondness for for those older skates because i spent a lot <laughs> spent a lot of time on those in the newer generation I, I miss a lot of yeah you know i wish um my first skates ever my first real skates ever were the 250 k2 250s oh yeah those are, um, those are amazing skates 
So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm still sort of uh, considering doing a video where I, you know, oh, I'm skating my first skates ever and like trying to find a pair of 250s. So, oh, good luck. They've been, they've been going pretty quickly. Yeah. They used to be everywhere. They used to be able to, yeah. I had three pairs I got for like 20 to 25 bucks each. Oh my goodness. And they're all gone. I don't know what, I think I gave them away, but yeah. man, I wish I, wish I went out on to them. <laughs> Uh, do you have um, Palladian what? Sports in your area? Yeah, but they have gotten hip. That's 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 where some of my really skates come from. Right. Before, it used to be like every skate was like $20, $30 max. But now exactly. they're like checking on eBay. Like I saw a pair of Ballos for like 150 I was like, oh, <laughs> and they weren't even in good shape, man. They are from Play It Again. They are hip. Yeah, Play It Again. The store is a little bit easier, but it's not much harder, you know, much harder pickings. Yeah, they finally are like, dude, why are we selling these things for 30 bucks when they're uh, we can sell them for 130 bucks? shoot i mean that and i guess the popularity of things they're just trying to get rid of things for yeah a long time there yeah <laughs> man i hate to see what they would would have given for like a pair of skates like that imagine oh exactly. imagine giving your 250s for like like probably two or three dollars to play i know can. and they turn right around yeah um okay so what size what size do you wear i'm like right at a 10 right at 10 okay yeah i don't think i have very many things that would fit you then yeah what um what's your what's kind of your go-to pair of skates right now can you describe those uh the main skates are the them 909s the danny beers, beers. Yeah. yeah i've got great matter soles on them and wish frames and intuitions uh, it's a good solid setup i actually i was coming from skating solomon for like years and years um they actually feel more solid than the solomons um which is pretty hard to come by so Wow. They are good skates, um, but then I've, I put together those King Fifty Fives with the razor plates on them, and uh, those are those are pretty dreamy. <laughs> the only thing I miss is the uh, the backslide plates, but um, yeah, for everything else, you just yeah, two fifties are just K twos in general. The old fatty style aren't the best for modern skating. They're amazing at the time, but yeah, they don't hold up as well as uh, some of the other older skates like those roller blades do. Yeah, I'm super impressed. Um, I guess, what would you say, whether it's nostalgia, whether it's function or form, whatever it is, what would you say is your favorite skate of all time? Mm. With the hard questions there. Uh, favorite skate of all time? I mean, the most, the most skate time I have is Solomon's for sure. Yeah. Um, I bought my pair of ST10s like when they came out, like in like 2001. And what uh, do those ones look like again? Uh, they're somewhere over here, but they're the the dark blue ones. Okay, yep, yep. Uh, I believe with white soles stock. Uh, okay. They've had all kinds of different kinds of soles on, but yeah, they lasted me until last year when they finally had a crack. To well, actually, I could still skate them, but the crack in them is pretty huge. So, mm. but uh, yeah, I got a good 20 years off that. Uh, Jeez. yeah so okay yeah, those are probably those are probably it that's fair that's fair yeah i skated my fair share of solomon's over the years hard you know hard to beat and you know, there's the rumors but uh, i doubt that'll be a thing yeah it's funny i can't remember the commentator's name at ramping camp but he was he's saying something goofy oh well uh, brad brad, Anthony. brad yeah he was like oh geez you know are those the new solomon's the new uh new release Solomon? i don't know he said something funny <laughs> correct yeah yeah, but. yeah, it's just such a good atmosphere at uh, which we call it. Oh, did you hear the um? They really were rocking the the karaoke. I was really surprised. You know what? Did I you think, hear any of that? I, you know, I didn't. I think I kind of I was super tired from I just everything I guess, and I think I crashed out before that really got kicking. Yeah, they got like I was in my car like sleeping, and like I heard it. I was like, I know, I knew they were getting. You know, they were talking about doing karaoke, but I thought there was just like, I thought there were the actual songs at first. And then I was like, oh, really? closely, like, oh, damn, this is someone, someone getting down. So yeah, there's a lot of musically. Oh, I had no idea because there were a lot of musically talented people at Rampart Camp too. So that was really sweet. Um, yeah, Phil is uh, fantastic. Holy cow! Oh yeah, that was super impressive. That guy's like, I mean, it was uh, it was amazing meeting you. It was amazing meeting a lot of people. Um, but Phil is uh, was one of the nicest dudes I've ever met. I mean, I actually, really guy. liked um, Mata Mata. Um, do you have the Aeons? Yes, uh, he did. He did like a he did like a looping kind of yes. 
tranquil which macaulay which was nice like i was talking to him about that it was actually kind of cool because like usually like skating is like you know let's do fast music or whatever but it's really nice to have like some like uh some really chill like meditation music I'm yeah like, you know what this you know it doesn't always need to be like go 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 it's like you can just slow down and and that was a it was a cool vibe skating to that yeah yeah absolutely i i don't think i was skating when he was playing but i was i kind of noticed myself like you know just like almost being in like a little bit of a trance of some sort right, right. like oh wow this is like really chill i'm just vibing at this um okay richard asks what is your safety grind? standard question what is my safety grind i mean it depends on what it is um and what side it is <laughs> so like if it was a ledge and i was coming at it and if it was a ledge on the right side sweaty would be probably my safety trick um and then royale for left side rails step on soul or back far but really just step on soul rails are really <laughs> I, f I don't have any comments on rails anymore um that's pretty much it and then yeah. oh if it gets to the end of the rail it'd be royale or front uh front far which is the same thing but backwards yeah, yeah. so yeah that's my safety trick and then set slide is set slide so <laughs> that's would, what i started out with would you say that you have been were your, I guess, were you doing set slides basically from the beginning, or was there like sort of a, a, a pivotal moment where you started doing those? Uh, yeah, I just um, the pivotal moment. I was skating, uh, hawking, some school in the middle of Ohio, middle of nowhere, Ohio. Twenty <laughs> six freaking one. Um, yeah, we we were skating uh like one of those like keys grader picnic benches or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like people were just set sliding, and I was like, "Oh, this looks like fun." And then I did pretty much every set slide I thought you know I could imagine to do a kind of set slide. And I was like, "Oh, I guess this is a thing I can do." And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, just do it. Just loved it ever since then. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's mm. always uh, it's always amazing watching like, you. I think. I mean, I I think there's a lot like kind of like the soaps, like set slide. There's a lot of things that cross over. If you can learn how to set slide well, um, like wheel bite, um, get used to just dealing with friction. So that's one thing. Like if you learn to set slide, um, and then just falling too. Like you know, it doesn't. You know, it's a good way to practice because if you fall on a set slide, you're already on the ground uh, most of the time, at least. So there's not a lot of impact. Uh, it's just you know the bending and, and the friction is which you got to learn to deal with. But uh, yeah, I feel like set sliding can really help other skating. Yeah. So that's definitely I, something I recommend. It's a lot. I mean, for me, it's a lot of fun, but I know not everybody's as bendy as I am. <laughs> so it can be difficult, but yeah. it's something that I'd say it's uh, definitely something that I would recommend learning. And uh, Aaron, yeah, he's been, Aaron Schultz, he's been doing a ton of set slides. And he's been, he's been loving it. And I love, I love watching it too. It's so, it's so fun pe seeing people, you know, discover something new and just go full, full board into it. Totally. Totally. I feel like that's that was me. I, I won't say I went full bore, but like I sort of just it, it discovered negatives just in the last probably year. Yeah, well, and, negatives and set slides. You've been doing really good at both of those. Uh, nice. When you're doing the set slide in the rain, you did a bunch of like hurricanes and did some oh, you saw fancy that. moves yeah. at the end there. I was thinking about you the whole time. Just, Honestly, I'm like, okay, how would Trey do this? Just like, channel that. I'm just trying to channel your like energy yeah. here. Your and they're, good for, and they're good for balance too, because that's what most of us set slide is. It's just finding that right balance point and carrying mm -hmm. it all the way through. Yeah, totally. Like you I know, think... as soon as you uh, get on it wrong, you that's don't go anywhere. That's a fact. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a quick quick critic for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say like your favorite wheels are? Favorite wheels? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not a big hardware dude, um, but probably the best wheels that I've skated were the, well, there's two, the undercover 72s, just the, the plain white ones. Mm -hmm. Um, those are incredible wheels. I don't know what it is about them, but like they lasted forever. They still had plenty of grip, but they still slided when I needed them to. And then the, uh, green circle of Louis Zamora's, um, they had a, pretty limited run of those but they were like 
same thing as the, the undercover wheels. It's just the right amount of grip, but plenty of slide, and they didn't wear. They, they never wore down. So yeah, wow. same thing. So I don't know what it is about those two wheels, but uh, they're incredible. But I also weigh nothing and skate flat, so uh, wheels don't don't really wear down too much for me, anyways. But mm -hmm. those in particular were were a good experience. Um, but other other than that, like I can't really tell the difference between one wheel or another, quite frankly. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way, to be honest with you. <laughs> um unless they start decoring after two sessions yeah yeah if they if they go wrong which yeah <laughs> doesn't really happen to me terribly so unless i get like okay. a thrift store skate and like the wheel just like explodes from age but uh, oh, that's, that's a different that's, story that's another thing wildly impressed i mean these wheels yeah they held, are still intact really well i mean they held up like champs honestly in skating them i skated them pretty hard um i believe they has rollerblade used their own wheels like on all of their skates i think I think so. Oh, these are 55s. I, I didn't even realize that. I don't ever recall Rollerblade having any wheels on them that were not their own. I can think of. Even yeah, the Pro Skates. So. Oh, oh, by the way, before... Um, I know you can see the comment on the screen right now, but mm -hmm. there should be a an option for you to get like on your... Are you on your PC? Oh, it's a comments little section there. Correct. All right. So you should be able to actually view the comments real time instead of I just the ones see that, that I just have this big giant camera right in front of where that is. I guess I can ah, move it, but uh, yeah. I, gotcha. I don't have the most intuitive stuff. <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's good, but uh, before yeah, I got, we, I gotten really lazy over the uh, over the pandemic. This is really self serving. But what camera are you using? Um, I'm using the Sony RX100 Mark. Or it's fairly similar to what you have. You have like a ZR or something like that. A ZX. ZX. Well, it's like oh, a, I'm sorry. What is this thing? You called? have like the newer version of. It's a of ZV1. Yeah. My webcam. Um, the batteries on it don't work anymore, so it works well as a webcam. But that's about it. Mm, gotcha. Okay. Cool. So, and then Richard has his question on the screen. Oh yeah. Uh, very good question. Um, tips for test slides. Uh, easy answer would be. Go to Home Depot, get some masonite board for like twenty, thirty dollars. Um, cut it in half, so that'll give you like eight feet or so, sixteen feet of grinding. Or you can cut it into fours, or just cut it into whatever fits in your car. Um, and then take it home, throw them over some grass, or you could even do it inside. But wax them up, and then just try to set slide on them. Uh, make sure they make sure they slide, you know, good enough. But I mean, you're on the ground. It's not going to hurt much, and do it. You know, do it at home. Or I used to carry. I used to carry them around with me in the tr trunk of my car. Um, if I ever want to throw it out, success slides, or uh, or they're just good to flip over and use them as uh, as you know boards. Um, so yeah, it's that's like you know whatever twenty thirty dollars for boards these days for masonite boards. Um, good deal. So. Yeah, that's probably the best way, and that's it's not going to tear up your skates or anything like that. Mm. If you try to do it on like you know concrete or anything like that, it's just gonna <laughs> you're not gonna have sole plates or a backslide uh, pretty quickly. So that would be my tip for for getting into it. And it doesn't hurt, and you can do it whenever you want to. So my I'm recommendation. Just... Yeah, um, I've had a couple of people ask me, and I'm curious your thoughts on this one. Um, learn. <laughs> In my opinion, it's 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 probably more important than learning how to do tricks is learning how to fail at doing tricks and learning how to fall without with while mitigating injury. Um, mm -hmm. What would be your advice? Because a couple of people have asked on me to make a video on this, and I'm a little bit at a loss to be honest with you. It is hard. I I even wrote like like freaking like two or two three page thesis or whatever to somebody who asked me this. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot to falling, and I think that is. You're, I think you're right. I mean, before skating, like learning how to fall is probably the best thing you can do. It is. It's an awkward thing to teach because it's. I feel like falling is more of a, a reactionary thing. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you're just ready. I mean, you can prepare for a fall, of course, but like when you're actually in the moment, like you don't. You only have a, a couple of you know milliseconds to to react. Um, but. Um, I mean, mitigating it is the best you can do. Like I've been talking talking to people that you know, showed me, like, oh, why am I falling like this? And and uh, center of balance is is a big thing. Um, I notice a lot of people skate that are that are like top heavy, 
uh, they're more prone to falling and more prone to losing control when they fall because you think about it, it's like, uh, I don't know, I have this little thing right here. It's like this, like this, this, the this it's got all the weight up top. When it falls, all that force is just going to go, you know, wherever it's going to go and you can't do much about it. But, you know, if you, it's upside down when the, when the, you know, the center of gravity is much lower, um, things are going to be a lot, a lot more control and your center of gravity is much lower. So even if you are falling, the impact is going to be much, much less greater on this bottom part than rather tipping all the way over to the, from the top. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing, learning how to fall. The other thing is just, you know, being ready, you know, taking a surveying, surveying everything. This was a, this was a drifting thing that like, you know, we could have a totally empty parking lot with like one light post, but someone was bound to hit that one light post mm -hmm. if, we were, if we were drifting. So just be, you know, situ situational awareness is, is pretty key too. But um, yeah, a lot of it's just falling and falling again a lot so like it's like the set slide thing if you fall and fall on the set slides on board that are in the grass like you know you're going to realize what happened you know what goes wrong and what to do when something goes wrong right. so that would be one way to practice um <laughs> another way is just not doing doing things that are you know well outside your uh your uh skill range too right um you know one thing i that, that i noticed for one thank you for that answer um one thing that I noticed is like our kind of average age of the roller aggressive rollerblader now is probably somewhere around 35 ish, maybe mm -hmm. more. I don't know, somewhere around those parts. And um, it seems to be as you age, most people tend to get a little bit stiffer and less flexible. That's true. And, it, and it seems like just from observation and maybe of myself and others that um, a lack of flexibility could uh, make you much more prone to injury. Um, oh yeah, are, for sure. Are able to react. So, what, for sure. so like, actually that leads right into this question from Tom V. Tree, how do you maintain your bendiness? Um, sure. Let me get that to in a second. Um, sure. I had a thought about what you were just talking about. Oh, um, it's kind of like um, how like whatever studies are about car crashes where, uh, especially in particular like drunk driving car accidents, um, I believe it's typically where the person who's sober got in much more gotten you know much harsher injuries than the people who are drunk and the reason for that is because the drunk people were more relaxed and more more fluid mm -hmm. whereas you know someone sober they're going to tense up and you know that's that's when you tense up is when and then we tense up and then the force goes like you know against something that's tense that you know it increases the injury there so more if you more just kind of flow flow with it that's going to reduce injury as well uh, in most cases, or not, maybe in most cases, I, I can't say that with any, uh, with any accuracy, but, um, it's highly likely that the more, the more just, you know, calm and, and the more you go with it, more kind of Tai Chi, whatever you, uh, you go with the flow of it, um, it will reduce some injury there. Uh, how do I maintain my bendiness is a good question, which I've tried to cover a couple of times, but, uh, I don't have a super solid answer. It's, it's like a probably like a three part answer. Um, first is like I'm just naturally bendy, um, and I, you know I do that constantly. Like I'm sitting down on my chair like this with my feet on the chair and my knees up, so I'm just always constantly like in a scrunch position. That's kind of my natural my natural thing. Um, but other than that, I don't really do any stretches or exercises. I've been not, I've actually not even been stretching for skating, which I don't know if that's the best idea or not, because I don't, I mean, I never know what the right idea is, but, uh, but I'm, I've been hearing some people say that like, sometimes it's better just to do the things because stretching will, will almost be a little bit more prohibitive because you're using muscles that aren't going to be used. Um, and you're kind of prepping the body for something it's not going to be doing. Um. How much truth in the matter is that? I don't know. But uh, really, the only thing I do is skate. I don't even, I don't exercise, whatever. And then I, I try to take care of my body, but I don't do a very good job of that. Um, but, you know, honestly, the, uh, you know, drinking water, eating healthy, getting lots of sleep and at least ample sleep, um, breathing, uh, you know, the basic stuff, uh, that's... I found is like key to a lot of things. Um, 
which is which there you know those are actually surprisingly hard things to do um but yeah i feel like at least for myself the more i can can maintain those elements uh, the better my body feels for sure um like right now i didn't get much sleep and i feel like i feel like garbage so um listening to your body is is uh helpful yeah <laughs> but hard really hard it is tough it is tough um did you see uh bobby spazov's new skate i did um i mean i'm conflicted i mean i'm not gonna buy it but yeah. Yeah. um but valos are back ish i didn't skate valos really so i've actually i actually don't think i've ever skated this pair of skin valos quite frankly yeah. i've always wanted to but i just never never did um so i mean I'm, that's you know that was right after after I got injured was when they started coming out. So I don't have the nostalgia for it. So so it's not my thing, really, I guess. I mean, I like skin skates, and they can be cool. I, mean, I have a cool design on them, but um, I'm not going to pick them up. Yeah, same, same. My brother had a pair of Volos. I don't even remember what Volos they were, but um, they were too big, <laughs> I think, for both of us. And, um, yeah, I just uh, I, I think they were good skates, but I just wasn't you know a huge fan richard i'll answer this really quick um i got so i don't know tree if you've ever skated the uh, i guess aluminum cord wheels oh no you had oh you had those at, did you have those at Grampian camp i yes i did and so in the you had them in the colts yes they what were, color the six, were they they were i think were white like... i think it's just almost like natural urethane color like kind of a whitish okay um, but didn't you say they had a aluminum core in them? Yes. So they're the undercover. But they're hidden cores. They're, they're not like out shiny like those other well, ones. Yeah, they're not super loud. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they're the undercover Apex wheels that I bought specifically for ramp and camp that, you know, I ended up not skating the ramp very much. Because <laughs> uh, you're not lying. That ramp's pretty big. And I'm not like a big transition dog either. So, um, but Richard, I will say like I liked them a lot. Uh, I made a video recently of where I went to Jacksonville, Florida and went to Kona Skate Park, which is like known, f at least recently, for being like very raw concrete all over the park. And it literally ruined the wheels in a three hour, maybe four hour session. They're done. Completely done. So yeah, I think those are like wooden only rails, right? Or wooden only rails. Wooden only, wood, you know, like wood indoor kind of park. Exactly. I think there is like a, a, a disclaimer or something on their, you know, their site or whatever that says like, hey, these are only for like smooth wooden ramps. Don't skate them on anything else. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Skate them at Kona, complete, I mean, not like literally not usable, not usable. Um, so don't do that. Don't be dumb like I did and do that. But did you like them? That I guess to answer the question. Uh to answer the question, I liked them a lot. They were super grippy because they were 88s. I don't think I've mm -hmm. skated anything under 90A um in a long time. And they just felt I don't know if it was the compound or whatever it was, but um they felt mega grippy, which was cool. Nice. Um, but it was different for me. Did you feel like the aluminum cores? Did that make a difference? Like I could feel like if you're doing like a big gap, that would be hindering. Yes. So I noticed at Kona, like, like I don't do gaps. I already skate cults with no shock absorbers. Like I feel like I'm, you know, I'm only 32, but I'm like not trying to, not trying to do any big, huge gaps anymore. I'm just a grinder blader now. And <clears throat> I just did something goofy. Like I just did one of my normal 540s out of um, the bowl at Kona, which is not mm -hmm. like insane. And I landed and I could tell my heel was already like very slightly bruised. And so to answer your question, I could tell a difference. I could tell there was a much more power transfer. It almost felt like my skates were heavier in the sense that they carried more momentum mm -hmm. in a way. Um, and also transferred to impact as well. Exactly. Exactly. I can't even fathom the guys that skate aluminum frames with aluminum cord wheels. Mm -hmm. Like, is it E? Well, what's the dude's name? Egan. Egan. Yeah. Yes. I can't even imagine landing flat bottom. Yeah, he's... Oh, he's, Egan's just a whole nother <laughs> different kind of, yeah, he just scares the crap player. out of me. And like, he takes, some, <laughs> he takes some falls that I'd probably be done for like a week and he gets oh, right back yeah. up. And that guy's beast. Does it, with. does it all over again and laces it. Um, have you ever tried uh, footprint insoles? No, the FP, would, FP, yeah, right? FP insoles. I would uh, highly recommend giving those a shot. Like mm. those are the one piece of skate gear that I have to have in any skate 
pretty much. Okay. Um, and they they absorb just like an astronomical amount of shock. Like, um, like jumping off like probably like a four or five stair set of mm -hmm. stairs feels like you're jumping off a curb to me. Okay. It make that much of a difference. And I would, you know, highly recommend. I've not tried the super feet, which I hear, you know, them being compared. Um, but for me, yeah, the FP insoles and they've lasted, I shoot, since like, since like 2012. So <laughs> I've had right. the same, I've had the same pair for 10 years and they're still going strong. So I see that there's flat insoles and orthotic. Do you just have the flat insoles? I have the flat ones. I have flat feet, so it doesn't matter too much. Okay. But I hear good things about the orthotic, and then they have the moldable ones as well. If you have like uh, some some arch stuff going on with your feet. Oh, cool! They even have little shock absorbers, huh? I have shock absorbers. I have. I've just bought their socks too. They have like that in just the shin and the uh, ankle bone area. Those uh -huh. have been nice too. Hmm. So do you have? Are these the ones right here? The zero drop. Or oh no, those are the thinner ones. Uh, they are very thick, like they oh. almost kind, of, like the uh, the, I guess the standard ones. I don't know what what they're called, but they kind of add like almost a size to your skates. Yeah. Um, but for me, they're they're totally worth it. And so I usually skate an eight now instead of a seven, just because uh, I want to use those insoles. Okay, I've had a couple of people uh, recommend those. Um, Jaquan Owen. He's a local shredder here. I know he swears by those. So, um, yeah, no, I'll definitely look into those. Thank you for that, for sure. Um, let's see. Let's see. So, sorry, where are you from originally? Um, I was born in Fort Worth, and then That's I right. moved to Ohio. Or my parent, my my adopted parents moved to Cincinnati when I was like two. So, right. um, I. Since I most my life, I visited Texas every now and then yeah. with my parents. But um, yeah, Ohio and then LA for a while when I was like in my twenties, and now I live in Chicago. You said LA. Mm -hmm. How did you like that? Um, it was okay. It was good for my twenties. I didn't really skate much in LA. Uh, worked for a band and lived with the band. Um, it's crowded. It's expensive, but the weather is nice. So. <laughs> at least it's got that over Chicago. Um, it's just it's more. It's way crowded though. I, I get, I get that social anxiety being around LA sometimes, especially too. Like, oh, I wouldn't want to live in LA now with like all the social media and everybody's got cameras and yeah. It's just like always being like in the spotlight, or you know, at least the feeling of that. I feel, you know, people vlogging and stuff. All the time. Okay. So, I mean, you, I see it a little, a little bit in Chicago, but it's not like I can only imagine what it's like in LA. It's just oh my goodness! Probably like, you know. Probably a tenth of the population is probably like you know content creators, less influencers. Oh, I know, like e city. just literally everyone is walking around. Yeah, just like creating con, you know. Yeah, it's it's weird. Like it's weird to be. I mean, I'm probably like the only generation who who, who you know have gone through the shift of being an analog world to a basically fully digital one. Um. So it's a weird time to be alive, I guess, because <laughs> things are changing dramatically, uh, very rapidly yeah. from what used to be the norm not long ago of, of not having these, these devices and so forth. So it is an interesting time to be, to be. The world is changing rapidly. It certainly is. Can be 40 tomorrow. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Travis. Yeah. Happy birthday, Travis. Travis is a uh, regular on the channel here. So happy birthday, Travis. Hope you're doing something fun for your birthday. Um, Tree, who um, would you say has inspired you most with their skating? What skater? With their skating? Um, Briggs. Michael Briggs. Mm. Uh, easy answer. He's yeah. just... Uh, he's just stupid good. But it doesn't. It doesn't look like. It doesn't necessarily look like the things that he's doing are challenging. Because yeah. he's stupid good. Like, uh, like, if you want to challenge, just go to Briggs' Instagram or or just a little bit of a Briggs video and try to replicate, you know, any trick, <laughs> any of his tricks. Like, I just I, pick one. I yeah. don't think I could really do. I, I'd be lucky to have like one hand of. You know, be able to count how many tricks I, of his I could I could do. It's just uh, yeah. he's just that talented that um, 
it's uh it's almost absurd <laughs> yeah it's insane every time i and see it's weird too because like yeah. you know he's just doing it and he's doing it by himself too which is really hard to get like well it can be hard to get motivated i feel like especially in like a public park oh yeah so it's like ah. so that also yeah. adds to it's like geez he just you know seems like he's out there by himself doing the most ridiculous hard tricks um super casually and right and it's just like ah, whatever so cool yeah, I Briggs, love this game. Briggs is the answer. Super unique. Super unique. Did you ever um because I you know, just thinking about Cess slides and 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 things, did you ever um take any inspiration or um my, one of the first videos I watched was I think it was underestimated by denial. Mm -hmm. Denial under and I I think I'm I think I, and Mike Elias, if I'm not mistaken, I might be thinking of. Mm -hmm. But did you um I guess did you, uh, what did you think about Michael Elias' skating growing up? Uh, I, oh, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. And we had very similar style, uh, mm -hmm. especially with like sit down back torques. Um, it's just like, uh, yeah, it's just like pretty much, <laughs> pretty much do it the same way. Um, so yeah, I could definitely, uh, definitely appreciate his skating because it's you know very similar. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably easier to appreciate because I saw so it because I know, you know, kind of where he's coming from on that so sure i uh, definitely love that um as far as other influences i think i mean this is more of a new school thing but like uh like scott razor and and robert Leavanos, they had the hurricanes mm. down like uh just they were just the most beautiful things for sure oh yeah i watched um the razor twins in uh the physics video i mean mm -hmm. it had to be hundreds of times um but no, that's that's awesome. Um, did you ever? So Tom says, did you ever get to skate Section Eight in Hubbard back in the day? I skated it one time. Um, I got one clip there, yeah. And that clip is long gone, I think. It's so they had the bowl there. It was like a bike park. We had like a big ramp. They had the they had a bowl. It had like a weird little like thing you could ramp in and then go, like, go and like there's a wall and you can go through the bowl and then like drop down to soul on that. And that's all I really remember from, yeah, from Hubbard. Yeah. So that was mm -hmm. that park. It was a fun park, but yeah, I only got to skate one time. Got it. Um, did you ever get to skate with Rob Scallon? Oh, yeah. I skated with Rob a decent amount and he's always fun to be around. And usually we'll talk about like YouTube stuff and all that, you know, all this, you know guitar stuff and all that stuff he does a lot of cool stuff he's probably like so say like one of the most popular i guess people who rollerblade out there yeah i like that people who um, rollerblade. but it's cool too because he, he hears a lot of rollerblading on his normal channels so and uh he has one of the best um tutorials on how to do a soul grind he just uh he was giving away a guitar and he went to the skate park in downtown he just said, hey, if you learn how to soul grind in these skates, you can have this guitar. Uh, and he filmed it all, and he filmed the whole process of him teaching the dude how to do a soul grind. He did He did on Braille, too, with a much more abbreviated version, mm, but yeah. a skateboarder, too, so it picked it up a lot faster. Um, but yeah, just a normal person. Dude actually skate that The dude who uh, he he um, gave the guitar to, he he, he comes to like the, the Sunday skates um, sometimes, so he got him into skating. Let's go, dude. So That's I, awesome. And he's, yeah, he's just a real cool guy to talk to, and He's so good at skating too, and obviously a, an amazing musician. Yeah, I, I remember him mentioning on the Braille uh, video. I think that he was like an instructor or a coach at some park or something. Like he used to instruct. Skating. Oh yeah, I think I was at the Y. I believe he, I think mm. he used to work at the YMCA. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, ben says, "If you could pick one single frame, what's your one favorite frame for everything aggressive?" Um, I am. There is a frame that's being 3D printed with my specifications, I guess, that should fit on the prime frame. Um, and I'm excited about that. Um, so it would probably be that frame. And ideally, it's going to basically be, basically be a Wish style frame with the with the 72 outside, I believe, and 60 inside, or I don't, I don't know what they're actually going to do. I just don't want to one, and he's like, oh, sure, I'll try to make it. Um, uh, hopefully, a smaller groove, because one big downside to wish frames, uh, 
because wish, wish frames are my favorite frames. But it's really hard to roll down stairs with wish frames because the block is so big. Um, so I want something smaller than that. But then I also want like a really deep groove. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. Let me grab the frame. Sure. Uh, we've got nine roller booters hanging out. If you would, please hit the thumbs up button. I would appreciate it. Uh, all right. So, like, one thing I miss most about like old skates is like really deep grooves. So, like, I wanted I want a groove that's even deep, deeper than this. But yeah. like, wish frames are so hard that this took me like ages of just like rubbing against a concrete block and then even like taking a Dremel to it a bit. Um, so like I want so hopefully it starts out with a deep groove, kind of like the um, how that rollerblade has a has a deep royale groove in it, right. but like probably twice as deep as that. So that's my ideal frame because like you can't really groove frames anymore. Like I'm mm. too lazy to to groove one, but I really like you know a nice deep groove where you lock in that pocket and you just feel it. Yeah. Um, rather than you know frames nowadays, so and shit's so hard that you can't really make a groove in them anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I do miss the softer frames, but obviously they didn't last. So you have to have some, some sort of uh, give and take. But I do, I do miss that. I, do, I miss softer plastic in general. Everything's so hard and fast these days, but especially for like for backslides, <laughs> like it's so hard to hold a backslide on like any modern skate because right. it's just so <laughs> quick. Um, especially grabbing one. Like I was talking about this, but. Yeah, like, on the Instagram like grabbing thing. it, grabbing is grabbing a backslide is significantly harder than it used to be, just because like just to maintain your balance, it's nice to have your have your leg to be able to kick around and and get balance rather when you you know you don't have that that leverage when you're trying to grab. I feel, right. but in the slower skates, you know, you could really get in that, especially when yeah, when it's more in the heel base like that. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot more stable there. I was talking to. Oh, who was I talking? Oh, I think it was Eric Michael. Yeah, he was talking about like having like two grooves, two or even three grooves in his like backslide. Like so, kind of like those uh those transformer freaking uh, USDs. Uh, what were those things called? Uh, not the Grycon. Not like no, Grycons. Not the Grycons. Or... Demetrius had a had a pro one. It's like where you could like move the backslide plate into like the back, the front, or the middle. Oh, I don't know if I remember those, but ideally like if there, there'd be three like i think i'd want like the back heel part to be slow uh the middle part eh, probably be fast and then the front part maybe slow for front torques but not mm -hmm. probably medium so <laughs> that would be uh that'd be pretty fun but it'd be weird looking probably but uh oh, i can't think of what those kids were called i'm like just throwing out keywords trying to find them but it's not working All right, let me let me get on the old the old internet oh. we do have the power to uh to find these things out i the, guess huh? the power of the interwebs yeah i don't know i <laughs> really just Demetrius. typed in random keywords i think i spelled demetrius wrong oh just usg see demetrius not the classic drum legacy is that it oh legacy sorry ben i'm not yeah tracking. that's it the U the oh it is the legacy, legacy. Um, that one you can't do. I think the first one is that you're able to actually able to to move the backslide to your position of choice, whether the you know the heel, the middle, or the front. Uh, didn't oh. make didn't, didn't didn't make a very aesthetically pre pleasing um, skate, but I feel okay. yeah, that's it right there. So like the functionality, I I, I I can get behind. Let's see if I can pull this thing up. Let's see, were those actually written? Wow. I, th these actually came out like. Yeah, after I got hurt, so but I think that was the uh, idea with these. I feel like those on oh, the suspension frames. I would like to have wow. those again too. I miss my physics. Those ones I hear bad things about, but uh, I, the physics I, are amazing. I think I had these on my. I think they were the Feinberg, like the last Feinberg Throne model. Um, like mm -hmm. they were like kind of an olive-ish, greenish looking color. Um, but they had these on there, and and to be honest, I ate a lot of shit on those. Frames. I don't <laughs> yeah, know why they just. You know, I would be interested in in, in trying to skate because I never skated them, but I wonder how they I wonder how they hold up. You know, what's interesting is I'm intrigued by these soul. Oh wow! Yeah, that's interesting. Can they be shifted? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 
Exactly. Are they why, like? Why are they so wide for the bolts? Exactly. Are they adjustable soles? Like, oh, I, I would like another. I think a lot of the skate was adjustable. Technically, eighth inch of sole plate today. So it's like, well, I want more negative. Uh, yeah, let me get more negative and less positive, and or just if you like, or if you used to like, I guess the rims used to be uh, off center or whatever, which I never um, noticed. Then they made the True Balance ones, and I never could tell a difference. When you say they're off center, what do you what do you mean? I'm not exactly sure. So, from what I hear, the old rims were like they made you skate like bow legged or something. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I, didn't, I never noticed that. What filament do you use for skateboards? I don't know. I'm not a 3D print guy. I'm, yeah, okay. So oh, I'm old fashioned when it comes to that stuff. Just whatever, which call like whatever I get. Or whatever knowledgeable person uh, so you're, the matter gives me. So someone is printing those frames for you. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, they were shifted to the right. Okay, thank you, Tom. Oh, did Tom? They were shifted. Oh, the so sorry. I'm still like not tracking on that. Can you like tell me in dummy terms what the offset shifted to the right the thing frame? I'm I'm assuming like. Uh, to the right, oh man, I got hair on my skate. To the right, so I'm guessing that would be like more over here where my hands at instead of centered. So the frame just shifted, or over there. or maybe more towards the negative side, maybe. So they had more of a positive. I see. So they weren't maybe centered stopped. under your foot. Effectively. Yeah, yeah. I see. That's my understanding, at least. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um. Squilly experience. Could you guys do more trick tip videos? I've been thinking about doing this more often. What about you? Uh, I'm considering more doing more talking type videos, but um, for me, talking is harder than skating. <laughs> like, yeah. like I, I okay. tried doing like streaming and stuff. I, I was good at video game streaming, but skating stuff is different. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I still like, there's still kind of like a, I guess you could say a stigma or whatever for for talking to the camera, especially yeah. like when skating. It always feels weird. Like I feel like, you know, <laughs> the other content creators out there and I don't know, it doesn't feel like me necessarily, but I do yeah. want to share information and, and, you know, advice and stuff like that and do answer, answer questions and stuff. So I am, you know, more keen to doing that. And I had a moment where, yeah, I was like, I'm going to do all this YouTube stuff and whatever. And, it was fun, but man, it's a lot of work too. It's sure a lot is. of work. What kind yeah. of uh, tutorials would you do? Um, so I, I I go back and forth with this because I was just literally thinking about this today. Is okay, you know, you, you, I feel like there's this kind of balance of like, okay, what are most people searching for on YouTube? And it mm -hmm. seems like most people are searching for pretty basic things: how to, uh, you know do a jump how to skate a ramp how to do a front side grind and so but then also there's plenty of people that would like to know how to do a back savannah or a, mm. a negative macchio or something um so i like to try to like bounce back and forth from niche to less niche and right. you know if that makes sense yeah i think i mean i, I think if you're you're looking for you know view count uh, obviously the more general things are gonna do better I feel like the uh, like Josh Acosta did a pretty good job of, mm. of balancing, you know, basic things and technical things, and uh, kind of sticks that he hasn't really been doing them much anymore. But um, sorry, who? Josh Acosta. Acosta. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He took a little um, break, I think. Yeah, but he had you know, very concise, not too much extra. Yeah. Um, right to the point, and sure. Here's what you need to do, and here's what you don't need to do. I, and the thing is too, like. I'm not really the best person to be giving advice for, like trees, knees, and ankles. <laughs> um, uh, very relevant. Um, uh, I don't necessarily skate like everybody else does, so True. I'm not necessarily the best person to be giving advice at the same time. And um, but I do like I do like coaching actually. I do like watching someone skate and telling them, you know, let's go. Oh, you could try this, and that might help, or whatever. Mm. Um, that's something I wanted to do. I just abandoned the idea essentially and haven't come revisited yet. Um, so I'm, uh, I thought about this question earlier and I forgot to ask, 
Um, and forgive me if you've already pursued something that I'm <laughs> unaware of, but have you ever considered pursuing some, um, maybe I'm going to call it a business endeavor in skating, whether you have your own, this or own coaching school or own park or own this. Um, yeah, good question. I mean, I dabble with ideas, but, um, I'm not really dove into anything. Like I even, like I have, I made some shirts and stuff on like a teespring. I don't, I don't even advertise that stuff. I'm not, a, I'm not a business guy. Sure. Um, that's why I'm, I'm glad I'm salaried now. So I don't got to do that millennium hustle anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I would like to, I mean, I would like to being able to make skating, uh, some sort of game, but or some sort of source of income. I, I mean, I, 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 you know, the dream to have, you know, have a life that revolves around skating and make a living off of it. But, uh, that just seems pretty far fetched at the moment still. I know, like, I believe you've said that, I don't know. I believe that you said that, you know, you would like to make skating a full-time thing. Yeah. Uh, and so I was curious, do you have any sort of, of game plan for that? To, totally derailed the question and got no. it on you but um yeah i'm curious about that <clears throat> yeah so i mean i've done a number of different things over the last s several you know i was in the air force for 10 years and i did real estate for a few years or whatever and um and now i'm fortunate enough to be like i guess i claim that i'm like semi-retired and um and i'd like for the channel to kind of support itself at some point in the, you know, distant future, you know, as far as buying skates and, uh, mm -hmm. doing trips and, and trying to create content for the channel. But, um, uh, I guess when I say full time, it's just, um, I think I have, I'm actually already kind of there. Um, I consider this, uh, this YouTube thing, kind of my full time job, to be honest with you. Um, so I, you know, I had a question I was going to kick back is, to you. Sorry, oh, go ahead. Is that, is that different from primary source of income, though? Uh, yeah. So I, I kind of have income from different sources that I've, you know, from investments and otherwise that kind of come in and support my lifestyle that mm -hmm. I can do this full time effectively. Um, and, oh, geez, I just lost what I was going to ask. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, it's all good. It's all good. Um, oh, I, you know, because me as a, like, I really just focus on YouTube. Like I might put out something on Instagram once every like week, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but me looking at Instagram and especially people like you and China and some other people who just like crank out clips. To me, I'm like, holy cow, like to me, that looks like a lot of work. And I put together 15 minute videos or whatever every other day or every day. Mm -hmm. Um, is it not a lot of work? What you know? Yeah, I'm I'm in more of a I'm more of a kind of like short burst kind of person. And I think and also I think my my skating um kind of lends itself to just, you know, quick clip of one thing. Uh, that and I realize that people don't, uh, people like me don't have attention spans for for long form content um, anymore. So it's just easier. And like, yeah, like it's easy to make an edit of something that's under a minute, and usually like you know, thirteen seconds or less. Yeah. Uh, and it's nice to be able to use whatever song I want to with with any you know without any regard. That's okay. Um, so and it's it's easy. I mean, it's it's been easy for me to just like go out, go session. Um, stack a bunch of clips and then you know just post them whenever i feel like you know i have like i have a routine ish like i'll usually yeah. post when i wake up in the morning and then if i got you know if i'm sitting on a bunch of stuff i'll post it in the afternoon um but uh it's just and especially once you get in the habit of it it's yeah. it's pretty easy uh it's it's you know it's, it's filming you know it's talking to the camera cutting out the it's like i said the the, the talking is the hardest part so that takes a lot of editing for me um, and I'm, you know, I get anxious and critical and nervous. So like, you know, like, oh, it's gotta be perfect. You know, right. so I need to, I need to learn to let go of it for that. And, you know, just, just roll with it for, for, for long form content. Um, which is why, like, I do like streaming. I like streaming a lot better than, than, you know, trying to film for some sort of video, YouTube what, kind of Sorry, video. why do you think that is? Uh, because once you stream, it's done. It's out there. You don't have to do any work mm. after it. So. 
I agree. And it's easier, it's easier to, you know, talk on the fly, especially when you have people interacting with you, yeah. you know, in real time, as opposed to, well, what are people going to think after this? And then you, you hear, it's like, ah, oh, well, that's not, a, not what I'm intended at all or something. Um, so, so yeah, like I think, and I, 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 I do videos for a living, so I do get burnt out on editing. So, mm. um, all those factors together is makes Instagram my my happy little home. That makes perfect sense. It really does because I don't know. I guess I think the biggest part, like you said, I think the keyword for me, at least with my little world over here in YouTube, is like you said, habit. It's a like rhythm. It's mm -hmm. almost like you build. It's not like a hard and fast, like at two o'clock every single day. I'm gonna, um, but it just becomes this habit, just like anything else in life, where you, you, it takes less and less uh, focused effort to actually initiate and do. Mm -hmm. And I think too, another thing of like making the YouTube videos, I had a, I had a real, I, I felt a real disconnect between like youtuber tree at the session and then just regular tree at the session mm. which does that make sense to you totally like i'm not i'm not the same guy and like yeah so it you know got the camera out it's it's it's, it's something different and i i don't like that feeling mm. yeah of, of being there but <laughs> the same not you know being in my, which is which is usually what i'm like but it, it's more apparent when when you know the youtube switch goes on so um yeah that's something that didn't necessarily enjoy Totally, hundred percent. And I, I, you know, sometimes I struggle with that myself. Where, it, to me, that's the biggest thing. Like, even more than like my goal with this channel is to spread rollerblading. Is to mm -hmm. get more people onto rollerblades or back onto rollerblades. Is kind of my little mantra. But even before that, the only way I can do that is to not burn out myself. Because if I do that, then there's no more channel and there's no more like mission here. And so, like, my only thing here is like. I think the only way to actually be able to do that with this long form content content is to like 150% like just be myself because if I have to change and act different, um, then I feel like it's, it's like an energy drain in a way. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't feel like I'm doing what I, what I genuinely or what I naturally would otherwise be doing. And it's just an energy drain and I'll, I'll hate to get in front of the camera every time and I won't, I just won't keep doing it. Um, so that's kind of my mentality with with youtube um but i mean yeah. we'll see where it goes well i mean the good thing about the, the difference like monetarily wise between youtube and instagram is at least youtube once you make the video it still continues to to generate income yeah. whereas instagram right now is just you know whatever you post that month it only counts as that month and once that month is over you know it could still get you know, it could go viral after that, which has happened to me. And then it's like, oh, I don't get paid to that because it wasn't it wasn't posted in that month. So, you know, it's very, I guess, you you have to keep up with it. So, if I don't keep up with it, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make anything up Instagram. So, um, but it's been I do like the Instagram layout just because I like RPGs a lot. <laughs> so they have like, they have like a little meter that goes up it's like, Oh, I want to get to the end of the meter. So it does make me, it does mm. make me work harder. Yeah. Um, I do, I do just do better when there's goals involved. So sure. and yeah, it's hard to come up with, you know, a new topic for YouTube. And for me, you know, for Instagram, I could just post whatever it could be. Something similar. And I could also, you know, I could, it's also an easy way to, you know, show my, show my friends and stuff and people I know, sure. um, which has been doing well, well lately. Cause like maybe last year, like it was, I couldn't really post anything other than myself. It just nobody watched it or anything like that. But I don't know what changed, but it's been doing well, and I've been happy to be able to to share other people's stuff too. I mean, what's what's your advice for people who are trying to gain traction on social media? Whether you know, I guess Instagram is kind of your your baby a little bit. Mm -hmm. I may be mistaken, but what would be your advice for for up and comers trying to get get traction? Um. I actually talked to I, I talked to like an Instagram uh, ad, advisor, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. else, uh, an advisor, and she has some good advice. And and you know, it's it's one is like just start and look at your page and and you know, go is this an app? You know, is this is this how I want to represent myself? And then two is, you know, bring whatever unique thing you can to the table, you know, whatever, whatever makes you you and instead of trying to be something else, you know, offer what, you know, you could offer that you can't get anywhere else. And I mean, if you can, I know not all people can do that, but if you're in that 
if you're in that category, definitely embrace that and and try to, you know, show what you know you can't get her anywhere else because that's that's kind of stuff that I look for is is those, those those rare diamonds where you know it's like oh man they're doing their own thing and that's really cool and they're also really good at it so just just follow what what speaks to you more so than anything and then audience your audience will come after that rather than trying to you know fit a certain certain something that's working mm-hmm. um because there's a million other people trying to do that certain thing that's working so that's i'd say go against the grain and like even with like um like i, I did streaming on twitch for a long time and like mm-hmm. luckily i'm into more more niche games and stuff so i was able to build an audience much faster than normal because i was interested in something that's abnormal so it's just, it's just like rollerblading it's like everybody's you know, you know people love rollerblading there's not a lot of us but the people that are into it they love it and they'll eat up anything they can get because you know there's well before there wasn't that much of it but still it's like you know here it is so that's also so category is a thing but yeah just do you and i guess it's instagram does do better for, for regular posting um like I often feel like I'm posting too much sometimes, but that's really not the case. Um, a lot of times I'll post like three videos in a day and, you know, that day I'll do better than, you know, if I just post once a day. So mm. um, it's never do, I guess it's not too much necessarily. And just as you go along, you'll learn what works and what doesn't work. And, but it, it's all it really comes down to what your, what your goals are. If, you know, you want to, you know, the follower count is what, you know, does it for you or the you know views or the comments whatever you know whatever you're trying you know you got to figure out what you know what what you were aiming for and then just look back on the things that you've done and see okay this one's working and this one's not and then obviously try new things and and use those those tools those, of metrics um to your disposal because that wasn't a thing before <laughs> you know you you put out a vhs tape hopefully someone buys it, buys it and you you know if you see them, maybe they'll tell you if they liked it or not. But, I mean, <laughs> now you have that instant gratification or opposite of that. Or, uh, <laughs> but, you yeah, know, you, not, ha- yeah. you have that feedback. So uh, take advantage of it. It's there these days. And it's, it's, it's something that you can utilize. Totally. Totally. Um, last question, I think, before we uh, kind of wrap this up. Um, favorite liners? Intuition? Favorite liners? Ooh. ooh. Um, that's a weird ooh. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> damn. I mean, I like I like my my intuitions. Uh, I used to like Solomon's. I used to be like Solomon lines, but they wear out and they're actually not that good <laughs> compared to the intuitions. Uh, it'd be into intuitions. I actually like the um, the My Fit Skinny Boys a lot. Mm. Um, I find them comparable, but I'm I'm not don't really care that much. I got. Joe Smith just gifted me the uh, intuitions. I wouldn't have bought them on my own accord. So, um, yeah, I'm cheap like that. But yeah, I like the intuitions a lot. And then my, but if I didn't have them, I would be very happy with my skinny voice. Yeah, and I lied. This is uh, like a self, more of a self-serving question, um, because you, you skate anything that you can put on your feet. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> And I, you know, I've seen over the years and years and years, um, I'm trying to like phrase this the way that I really want, (laughs) um, where people will kind of chase and chase and chase after that perfect setup or that perfect skate. Um, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on, you know, skating one setup and getting good and familiar with it versus constantly adjusting okay um yeah that makes sense i mean there's there's no right or wrong it's what works for you i mean there's you know the people that pretty much have only skated thrones their entire life and that's all they want to skate and or razors for that matter i mean and i by by all means more power to them because you can get really good in one pair of skates and like like if i like i love the aeons if i only just skated aeons like i was probably the most solid in those skates if I only skated those, I, you know, it'd be a good time. So there's nothing, nothing wrong with just wanting to stick to one thing. Sure. Um, but I like, I like trying out different stuff and, um, 
especially when the you know the more obscure it is it's like it's almost like learning how to skate all over again which is why sure. i like trying trying different things um but as far as like trying to find the right setup yeah like the, the right setup um i forget who put it just put it out there but uh, the right setup for you is, is the one that fits right and feels good um maybe you said that even I can't remember. I, I know I've said that before, but I was parroting. I was parroting it. Okay, so else. whoever originally said that, yeah, you said that. To yeah. quote Ben, quoting who knows, um, yeah. that's uh, that's probably it. And 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 then another quote is the, the quote of you know the camera person, the camera people. It's like you know the best camera you have is the camera that you have on you or available to you. Um, the same pass you know the best ski you have is the ski that you can get because they you know see people in poorer countries, but you know they make do with what they got and and heck they could do a lot of things and. And there is something to be said about learning on a pair of, you know, skates that aren't necessarily ideal is that it's kind of like uh, if you compare it to drifting where you start drifting an old Corolla, like that has no no power and, you know, it's all skills, you know, it's all, um, nah, I'm drawing a blank here, but, you know, it's all, all, all your talent there. So, um, yeah. yeah, learning learning on something less than ideal is, not, you know, kind of can be actually beneficial. Mm -hmm. um and it's all it's all learning anyway so once you get you know once you get the skills it'll transfer over and so skills aren't necessarily baked into a skate you're not going to buy the most expensive pair of skates and be able to do everything in them um that's why i like the sport because it's different than like cars because you know you could buy a supercar and you automatically have a, an advantage but with skating it's it's about what you can do so skates can only take you so far mm-hmm uh just want to shout out richard richard's uh spear thank you so much super chat for the super chat um okay all right i promise this is the last question but I, I if you could what is like your dream drift car setup dream unlimited drift car setup oh um <clears throat> well dream car would be an nsx but that's a terrible drifting car did you do were you into drifting <laughs> I, I never was in, I never like owned, uh, you know, any drift car or anything, but I was into cars. I was into imports. Right on. Uh, probably, probably the, uh, you know, the 90 Supra. Big, yeah. big fat boy. Oh, that or um, the uh, the GS300 or the, what, was the Soar? No, no. Oh, the Soar. Soar was, was. The Toyota Soar with the 1J, I think. Soar was the two door. What's the four door? Ooh. Uh, there was. Oh no! Are you talking about? Was it, was it available? Was the SC three hundred is Soar. Right. Yeah, the GS three hundred was an Aristo. I believe something. I have not car talked in a long time, so. I'm trying to remember. I just saw a video today on YouTube where it was the V12. Um, they called it like the 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 Japanese Rolls Royce, where it's a V12, the Toyota. Um. This is gonna bother me. It's literally a V12. Um, anyway, whatever. But the soar, yeah. Um, so sorry, it's like a four door. Is it similar to a soar? That's what you're saying? Yeah, I believe the soar because I had I had both of the you know American equivalents. Mm -hmm. um, the soar was a two door, and I believe I want to say it's an Aristo. I, you know, you both they both had two JZs in them, just you know non turbos. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like the, I like the, you know, I like, I like a car with weight to it, I guess. Yeah, my bad. I totally, I said one okay. J. I thought that, um, cause there's the SC 300, SC 400. Yeah. Um, yeah. The SC 300 had the V6 and the 400 had the V8 in it. Oh, okay. Same okay. with the GSs. But the, so the, the 300s had, have the, uh, have the 2J, uh, non -turbo naturally aspirated. It. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Word. So, I'm sorry. So the answer was whatever that mythical car is. Yeah, basically the GS300. Got got it. Or okay. Supra. Or the Supras Supra. are more expensive. I'd feel yeah, bad those things. I'd feel bad are... crashing one. You crashed one. No, I'd, I'd feel bad crashing one. Oh, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. Well, yeah, the other thing that that's the that's a good difference about drifting versus skating is that when you fall on skating, it's not gonna be either life. Well, it can be life terrifying, but more more of um, damaging to your wallet. When you, sure. When things Goodness. go wrong with drifting, so there is excitement there. Yeah. Holy cow. Um. Alrighty. Well, I get. I think we're gonna call it there. Um. Just sorry. Like we got. You gotta watch Bobby. I think is that all you gotta. You gotta watch. 
Um, I think so. It's you know we've been it's almost two hours of streaming, so we might. Uh, oh, good lord. We might call it here, actually. So, but thank you for coming on for sh on such short notice. It was a pleasure. Um, thank you. It's nice to talk to you. It's easier to talk to you when, when I've already known you too. So, or I've already met you. So. Yeah, absolutely. So. Is your buddy doing okay? By the way, up in camp. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, he was on earlier. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, him. Um, Jeremy. Yeah, he actually. We're. Sp <laughs> it's funny because we were just in the group chat earlier today. And we're supposed to go to House Park in Austin tomorrow. Cool. Um, and he he's still very much healing. Um, and he's not planning on skating. But uh, oh, okay. he's, he's, he's an avid photographer. So he might come out and do. And with his good arm, <laughs> shoot a little bit of shoot, shoot some, show, some photos. But he got surgery. Okay. Um, and uh, he should heal here in the coming weeks cool. slash months. So, yeah, well, But he's doing okay. Yeah, he's doing okay. Hopefully it's fast. All righty. Well, thanks again for uh, jumping on with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was a good time. All right, brother. Have a good one. All right, see you, Ben. Bye. All right, everyone. Well, uh, hey, thanks, everyone, for being here. It's first live stream back in a while, and uh, we were fortunate enough to have uh, Tree on the uh, live stream here, so that was a treat. Uh, every now and then we get um, a surprise guest, so you'll have to make sure to tune in to the next one. Um, but um, yeah, I think that's it. We're going to call it there. Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't already, please, on your way out, give the video a thumbs up. It helps uh, get rollerblading out to more people here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, happy to be back from the um, from the Florida, Georgia, Maine tour. <laughs> And I'll uh, be doing more live streams here soon. So again, thank you everyone for being here. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care.